hurt a little bit. <laughs> um, now, if you wish to tell me something about your work, it would be very nice. So I'll share about uh, I'll share a piece that I've been uh, working on for a few years, and it's unfinished. It's a, a long poem, and it is part of a, a book that by the same name as the poem. Uh, the name of the poem is I Am, and the book is I Am the Singularity. I Am the Singularity. And uh, what I want to say about this is that uh, the title of the, the poem was inspired by a, not just the idea of a, the singularity this itself, a particular book by uh, Ray Kurzweil called The Singularity is Near, where he writes about the evolution of technology. And uh, he has the a thesis in his book that by sometime in like the 2030s or 2040s, sometime in the near future, that technology, computer technology in particular, like artificial intelligence and biotechnology and nanotechnology, like those specific areas, are going to be so well developed that they're going to be able to um, begin to develop themselves. That's already happening. Like machine learning is like a uh, kind of a loop, you know, where yeah, it produces data on, and act on its interpretive, like, uh, you know, rubrics. And uh, so we're on this path of accelerating technological evolution. And there's a movement and there's a school of belief that, uh, that this technology will become conscious in some way. And that the consciousness of the, the, our technological creations are going to become greater than our own and are going to make us uh, maybe obsolete, are going to transcend us, and, uh, and that humanity is going to become um, uh, like ob obsolete, essentially. Uh, so uh, I, I was interested in that idea, and um, at the time I was also more um, excited about technology and excited about the internet and the way that things were going and all the cool mm -hmm. um, computers and cars and um, the possibility of space flight and colonizing Mars and this idea that um, and then the, all the nanotechnology like it was very exciting uh, to me um, but the more I thought about it and the more I um, looked at the world situation and the ways that technology is not always a positive force and oftentimes is used by human beings and also by like darker forces for, um, for the, just the gain of a few or for like a destructive agenda. Uh, and also the accumulation of effects that is um, like encircling the earth and, and framing the earth. Like the meaning of singularity began to change for me. And, um, and then I also wanted to reappropriate, I wanted to like reappropriate what we're really talking about when we talk about consciousness and when we talk about like evolution that we're not just talking about technology that we're also talking about society and we're talking about our culture and we're talking about our our our, our being and that the real singularity a more real singularity would not just be about technology it would be actually kind of a a kind of historical culmination of of a of a of a long process that um, that would lead into the next world, would lead into like a new a new a new reality, basically. So um, I, I didn't want to explain it. I wanted just to, to share it to share it directly. But I will say that it's like I said, it's it's a long poem, and it's also inspired by other poets who have been um, meaningful to me. Um, one of them is Allen Ginsberg, who was an American poet um, famous for his long poem, Howl, 
which he published in 1956, I think, 55 or 56. Uh, he had a long career uh, in American poetry and world poetry, uh, and also founded, co-founded a school for poetry called the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics at Naropa University, which is just uh, the next town over in Boulder from, from where I live. So I feel a personal connection with, with Allen Ginsberg, and um, when I was young, his work really um, moved me and made me want to write poetry. Uh, another poet, or another poem that's uh, inspirational is uh, and a very different kind of poet than Ginsberg, uh, but T.S. Eliot, uh, who was an American poet from St. Louis, but became a British citizen uh, later in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, and among other uh, great works, he's well known for a poem called The Wasteland. And The Wasteland kind of describes the, the spiritual desolation of Europe uh, and America, the West, the Western world, uh, in the wake of the First World War and of the beginning of the techno, um, like the technological colonization of the earth when machines were being made and machine techno. Um, like the technological colonization of the earth when machines were being made and machine guns were being made and airplanes and uh, we started to get a, a sense of what is actually going on here. It's very different than what was going on in the 19th century and in medieval times and in ancient times. Like this is something new that's happening and something very scary. That was kind of I think the uh, that what we're still living through. So. These poems, The Wasteland and Allen Ginsberg's Howl for me. And then the last piece I want to name, before just sharing a p part of the work, is more of the popular culture, like hip hop, the way that hip hop artists rhyme and they speak from their, their, like their, their, their first person, their real experience. To me, that's, um, uh, I think that's what like, poetry is about and it's about that uniting of opposites that we talked about. So 